Ladies and gentlemen, you've never even heard of this game. If I was a typical YouTuber, or indeed a YouTuber at all, what I would do at this point is I'd make a thumbnail saying, like, like, like taking the, the screenshot and, like, adding some stupid stars and special effects to it. And you know how they do that thing? I hate this crap. Where they, like, draw on, they, like, they, they pick a picture, they draw on top of it to make, or they morph and distend it to make it look like something else. And I would have Cthulhu being like, ah. and like, the best game you've never heard of. And there'd be, like, a an arrow somewhere for some stupid reason. And probably a woman with way too much cleavage for absolutely no reason. Just just to get people's attention. <laughs> Real talk. Earlier, uh, someone was asking me who the most attractive man was in Star Trek. So I googled Star Trek sexiest character. One of the results was a very clickbait. I didn't click it. A very clickbait uh, thumbnail. Here it is. And it's an extremely obviously photoshopped porn model being photoshopped on top of an existing Star Trek actress. And they do that three times. Apparently it works. Because those videos get clicks for some reason. But I'm not going to do that for you because I have no idea what this game is. This is a game that was put on the list by my friends. This is actually unique in this respect. It took 700 and 29 days to to get this game into fundable status, to, to have this game funded, because of the fact that nobody's ever heard of this game. The only people who put any money towards this game, to my knowledge, are Gary and Pax. So thank you, Gary and Pax. I will also say shoutouts and thank yous to Andy, Command & Conquer 2, Bregwin, Potato, Cord, Linkensky, Valerian, uh, Valerian Wraithwall, excuse me, Permius, Final Cloud, Roco Art, Fringe Philosopher, uh, Zoki, Zuki, excuse me, Alex Corbianiki, Gwaihir the Windlord, Vansini, Bearclaw, Ryman 6000, Nightwing in German, Krenzler, Dream Whisperer, Javan, Retro Justice, Reggie Brock, Goodbar, Michelle Kathleen Hodgson, Permius, Renegade Divi, Kashtar, Cody, Dark Day, Doom Rider, Dolvig, and Vigilant, all of whom are the dealer's choice who made this run happen. And yes, that Gary. Along with that Pax. So, thanks. Now let's see what the hell this is. Uh, Cthulhu Saves the World, Super Hyper Enhanced Championship Edition Alpha Diamond DX Plus Alpha FES HD Premium Enhanced Game of the Year Collector's Edition. Which I know you didn't see, which is why I paused it so I could read that really quickly. Game, you need to give me a second. The legends speak of an ancient prophecy. Ancient something, god, hang on, hang on. There we go. An ancient evil known only as Cthulhu. It's said to have come to this earth, what are we, Lavos? From beyond the heavens. For eons, Cthulhu ruled from atop the great city of Ryla. I think they stole that from WoW. I'm just joking. Obviously, in Wild it's Nihilotha. Big difference. Well, the legends are silent as the fall of Great Ryla. They all foretell the same prophecy. Cthulhu will rise again. So we're the chosen one. I guess. Uh, 16, I think, Spartan. It was like plus 3, plus 5 or something. Looking good. <sighs> yep, yep.
We have the Master of Not Beating the Game, Vanquisher of Nothing, Champion of Level 0, Winner of 0 points in Score Attack, and have not completed Highlander Mode. We have hoarded 0 gold. normal. Uh, normally, this is the point at which I'd pause the game and go look up what these difficulty settings do. Unfortunately, this game has so little information on it. This is a true sterile story. So every time I set up a stream, I have to flag which game I'm streaming. Obvious reasons, right? So, I set up the flag to say I'm playing Cthulhu Save the World, which has so many followers uh, that it actually has a, had a pop-up I've never seen before, which shows this has zero followers and zero people watching this game. So that's cool. I'm going to look up one thing really quick. Just just in case. You never know. I might actually find something here. This was dominated and put forward by Gary and Pax. It's not a long game. Don't worry. We'll probably beat it tomorrow. Rax and Rax are very different people, yes. Rax is a short thing of Raximus. Pax's name is Pax. Zactus. Zactaft, excuse me. So I found exactly two walkthroughs of this game. You might think there's three walkthroughs of this game, and you'd be a liar, because one of them is actually a repeat of the other one. Neither of them even mentioned the difficulty options. Well, in the absence of information, I'm going to just assume that these are very well designed, very well crafted, extremely good difficulty options, and give them a negative. Moving on. Sure. For countless ages, that unthinkable being known as Cthulhu has lain dormant in the underwater city of Ryla. Cthulhu, a being so terrible at his mere presence, is enough to drive mere mortals insane. Cthulhu sleeps while the world above goes on, oblivious to his presence. Until tonight. Awaken, great Cthulhu. As Cthulhu emerged from the bay, the world seemed doomed indeed. But wait, what's that? A brave and mysterious stranger has appeared from high atop yonder cliff. Using a strange holy power, the mysterious stranger has sealed away Cthulhu's horrible powers. His power drained, Cthulhu washes up on the neighboring shore, defeated and dejected. Arr! 
After waiting all this time to have a victory snatched from my grasp by a mere mysterious man is highly frustrating. I must get my powers back, but how? Luckily for the world, Cthulhu didn't know the one and only way to break the curse and regain his powers. In order to break the curse and regain his powers, he would have to do the unthinkable. He would have to become a true hero. Only by becoming a true hero would his powers return to him. <laughs> Foolish narrator! While you were busy explaining the situation to the player, I was eavesdropping! Now I, too, know the way to regain my power! Whoops. I, Cthulhu, hereby devote my life to becoming a true hero! But only so I can regain my power, summon rally to the surface, and destroy the world, of course. And thus, a most unlikely hero was born. Welcome to your new life as a wannabe RPG hero. Before we begin, allow me to give you a few pointers. The great, the great Cthulhu needs no assistance! However, for the benefit of the lowly player who dares control me, I will allow you to continue with your feeble tips. Hold left shift while moving to run. <laughs> Foolish game developer. By giving me the ability to run, I'll finish this silly game in half the time! I'll be able to sell it back to the game store before the trade-in value drops! Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Press the tab key and bring up your menu. From here, you can check the stats of your party, check out your stats. Start a fight, change your equipment, save your game, or teleport back to cities you visited. I can save at any time? What is this, an FPS? But the use abilities like Insanity Slashing Comet to make your enemies insane. Insane enemies take more damage from attacks, but watch out. A few enemies become more dangerous when insane. There will be no watching out! I shall bestow the gift of insanity upon all! Build up your combo count with hits. Unleash powerful combo finishers like Deathblow for massive damage. Are you done yet? It's alright with you. I'd like to actually play this game sometime this year. Good luck. Cosmic monstrosities don't need luck. We forge our own destinies no matter what the cost to humanity. We're also very cute. Behold our cuteness. This is made in RPG Maker, wasn't it? No judgment, just... This, this was made in RPG Maker, wasn't it? That's a good question, Noctis. Yeah, this is this is the uh, frostbite engine here. Oh, three one ups. You can use a one up to reset a field battle. Welcome to Cthulhu Saves the World. Director's cut commentary. Scattered throughout the game are a number of question marks like this one. Talk to each one to learn behind the scenes and learn about the game's development. Aha! A helpless maiden beset by vicious monsters! I shall rescue her and thus become a true hero. That would work for a normal person, but you have a lot of evil to atone for. It'll take many heroic deeds before you're even remotely close to being considered a true hero. Ah! I will kill the monsters anyway, just for the sake of violence! Yes, yeah, RPG Maker. Probably act. An endangered species for obvious reasons. I give you insanity. If this is a truly RPG Maker game, which it totally is, I believe this is now the fourth. Uh, RPG Maker game we've streamed on this channel. Die, foul slime monsters! As Cthulhu defeated the final slime monster, he turned his gaze to the main need rescued. Gorgeous. What? When Umi gazed upon the mighty Cthulhu, she didn't see a crazed octopus dragon man. Instead, she saw this. Warning, image displays may not reflect reality. My hero. 
Hero indeed, do you hear that? Do I do I count as a true hero yet? No. Ah! At any rate, it's okay. He's got lots of tentacles, so this makes sense. At this rate, I will never become a true hero and regain my cosmic powers of destruction. Oh, brave hero who saved me from a gooey death. Let me join you on your noble quest. Do you do anything besides get attacked by slime monsters? I have an affinity with creatures of the sea and call them my friends. Pass. I have this trident which I use to stab things. That's more like it! And above all, I promise to be wholeheartedly devoted to you with love, devotion, and... Uh, okay, I'm reading this. Good look. I promise you my wholehearted love and devotion, you great big green hunk of handsomeness. Yes, the great Cthulhu requires groupies! You shall do. Yay! Does this mean we're dating now? No! We are in a strictly rock star groupie relationship. For now. <laughs> now that you have a second party member, you can use the chat command. You can also use multi uh, character unite abilities in battle. Random encounters are active in this dungeon. After fighting 25 battles in area, random encounters will be turned off. If you'd like to fight beyond that, press tab to bring up the main kingdom and fight option. That's an interesting feature. Also, 25 encounters is a lot. Still an interesting feature. See, obviously, pretty much all our story is going to be on the humor side of things. So we'll see how the jokes land, shall we? I took fighter ability, Von Falkenstein. Fighter for life. Because I like swords. So when you say changes encounters, what do you mean, Noctis? Like, change the specifics of which enemies you fight in which groups? Because that sounds like very carefully crafted, well-designed difficulty. Oh, I, I, I don't have any ability to be funny whatsoever, type 3B Skeleton. If Pax was here, he would tell you exactly how unfunny I am. Unfortunately, the idea of actually watching me stream a game he himself paid in order to make me play is far beyond Rax's capacities. So, Pax, not Rax is not here to tell you the truth. Let's chat. Is that a live starfish in your hair? Yes, her name's Penta. Isn't she cute? A live starfish in your hair and people think I'm disgusting. From the begin original design document for the beginning of the game, Underwater Palace of Cthulhu begins with control of Cthulhu in his powerful evil state. An easily won battle with a group of heroes basically serves as an introduction to combat. Basically, let the power have fun being overpowered by the start of the game to give them a good demo experience. A.K.A. Taste of Power. After the battle, a cutscene where it sets up the premise of the game loses the part after getting it. In the end, we scrap this idea. With only eight minutes for the trial experience, with the X... Xbox Live something games uh, version, we decided that it was more important to get the player into the main part of the game as soon as possible, so we created the opening you could see in the game. Speaking of the opening, we wanted to show off the new map engine for Cthulhu Saves the World in the demo, so we made sure the player has to walk under a bridge in the first couple of minutes. Multiple layers on a single map. Sadly, not one review for the game mentioned the joys of walking under bridges. All that joy for naught. But layered objects! Okay. Actually, speaking of someone who has worked on this kind of stuff before, being able to have proper layered objects like this is a little harder to do than it sounds. And I mean that. Because most maps, uh, most especially 2D maps like this, like the original RPG Maker, only have one plane, one layer. So, under those circumstances, I could go under here, and then if I go left, I would just go onto the mountain, because, you know, there is only one plane. Actually, setting up multiple layers takes different work. So, I'm afraid your statement is now factually incorrect. I have mentioned the bridge. No pluses to gameplay, though. The town of Miskatonia is just past this series of caves. I'm sure there are some heroic deeds you could do there. To Miskatonia! Interesting transition. 
warning, do not remove the hard drive or memory unit while saving, loading, or viewing save files. Yeah, I should probably mention... Uh... I... If there's one thing I've learned over the years of everything, but especially programming, it's how much effort goes into the tiny little things you never notice in game design. Um, I'll go with less likely to be attacked. There's a speed run for this game? Holy crap. Yeah, me neither, honestly, King DD3. I've never even heard of that game, Simple Gamer. Hello, Czar. And, uh... No, we beat Ruiner, Czar. And yes, I am familiar with RPG Maker. And game design in general. Especially RPG design in general. See? Look. The bridge actually works as, as intended. It is another layer. I do like how they have different graphics based on whether they're insane or not. Sure I did, Simple Gamer. Guys, I think Simple Gamer's been taken by Cthulhu. I have no idea, Act. Probably the only thing I don't like about this is backspace is the back key, and I get Y, but it still means I have to kind of go out of my way and take my hand off the keyboard in order to hit back. The tunnel up. Tunnel down is fine, that's just enter. So I can just have enter right next to the arrow keys, which I'm using to navigate. This game is $10 right now. So, what just happened there is another example of a tiny little thing that's more irritating or frustrating to do than you think. It's like this. Let's say I attack an enemy. <sighs> Let's say a previous uh, party member I have has also has a cute attack on that enemy. That enemy dies to the first attack. What happens to the second attack? Nowadays, the idea of the, the, idea of the attack rolling over to the next target is natural and fluid, because that tech was invented back in the NES era. But on any given new engine, you have to actually sit down and think about exactly how you're going to calculate that attack attacking another a target. Like, there has to be a trigger there saying, hey, target no longer valid, continue forward with attack, and target who and how and what. And that's actually more complicated than it sounds, especially if you do something like a multi-target attack, or a multi-target attack that doesn't attack the entire enemy group. Or if you do an attack that only heals one person, and you get it. If you really want to get complicated, some games do a really cool thing where they will interpret based on the attack you did. Yeah, like multi-hit moves, exactly. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Cthulhu Saves the World is $3. Oh god, global clocks. Yeah, I've talked this I've talked about this before. You ever wonder why so many games tie programming logic to frame rate, it's because it's one of the easiest ways by far to have an internal clock during the course of a game. We're getting shrek here. Okay, so hang on. Uh... Yeah, I didn't think so. And we're dead. Uh... Control.
Hello, Evo. Susumu Hirasawa's Island Door music theme used in Roner. Huh? And that's my answer to you. Any questions? This is one of the reasons why the kind of stuff I was just talking about is usually baked into engine nowadays, so the developer actually doesn't have to think about it. This was all still stuff that needed to be solved at one point in time. More strength. For real, I, I don't know what you're referencing. I apologize. Listen, we don't talk about assembly in this chat. Cobalt. I do not know Cobalt, and God willing, I never will. I, I have studied Cobalt enough for one lifetime. Damn it, that was a chest. Well, whatever, let's go get the chest. Just for you, Evo. I'm gonna go loot this chest. Oh, yeah, no, COBOL, a lot of deep infrastructure programming sits on COBOL. And that means that if you happen to be really good with COBOL, you've probably got actual job security. The downside of that is you actually have to know COBOL. You also have to know COBOL, like, as in you really have to know COBOL very, very well. Because, uh, everyone else knows the same trick that you do. It's also probably worth noting that most people who need, have need of a COBOL programmer already have one. So, good luck getting into that market. No, it was just a really short game, Zar. I'm curious where it played and what it was, Zar. So how do I feel about the completionist? Well, uh, he's a... From what I understand, I have not done a true deep dive on the matter, but from what I've looked into, he is a scum lord who probably uh, deserves to die in a fire. Uh, so something like that. Something like that. I mean, I don't wish literal death upon the man, that's stupid. But I do kind of wish him destitution for the rest of his life. Any questions? Hey look, it's that bridge! We finally get to go over the legendary bridge. The bridge that's never mentioned in any review of this game ever. The greatest bridge of all time. Hang on, just take a moment. Take a moment to soak it in. Okay, let's go. I, we apparently have not run into 25 encounters yet. Oh, and while we're on the topic, that's a nice backdrop. While we're on the topic, I obviously have spoken negatively about RPG Maker and in a derogatory tone. Something I kind of stand behind. But the thing is... I actually highly recommend anybody getting into uh, game design and programming make at least one, probably closer to ten, games on RPG Maker. Because it's a really, really good... Um, that's a funny entity. Uh, RPG Maker is a really good way to learn some of the basic fundamentals of game design. You know, really, really basic stuff. The stuff you never think about, like we were talking about earlier. 
So if you're just getting your feet wet, I've recommended it to several people before, just so they could figure out what they're doing. What's that on the horizon? I am Ilona Lena. On behalf of the Earth, we will right wrongs and triumph over evil, and that means you. Switchblade's the name. I'm here to steal from the wicked and give it to the just. Uh, I am Dash the Daring. My courage is only rivaled by my good looks. We are the three heroes of goodly justice. Dark Fiend Cthulhu, we will defeat you and restore light to the world. You're a Dark Fiend? You should have told me. Oh, that's so sexy. I see you have used your vile magic to ensnare that beautiful maiden. Release her! Please. If I was using my magic to ensnare someone, I would have picked someone much hotter. Hey. Yo, narrator. Do I get hero points for defeating annoying heroes? No. Well, I'm gonna beat them up anyway. Virtue always triumphs over evil. We are sure to win. Your friend hiding over there doesn't look too virtuous, hiding behind a cloak and all. I have a skin condition. Let me alone. Ha ha ha! Puny humans! Even with my powers locked away, I have more than enough power to deal with my first boss fight. I kind of wish I'd save first, though. But I didn't see the boss coming, so... Boss fight number one. First, let's drive them insane. There we go. Well, supposedly this isn't our BG Maker. Interesting mechanic that the, the monsters literally get stronger every single round for no other reason other than the fact that it's been another round. Lame Hero Zero. Yeah, this is the PAX game. Yet, yeah, no, he's not here. Hope they're okay. They're adventurers. I wouldn't worry about it. They've probably already respawned at the nearest church. Wonder if we'll beat them again. Probably. Enough contemplation. Onward to heroism! Uh, yeah, keep playing. There we go. The three generic heroes that Cthulhu faces is one of the few story elements in the game that was originally proposed by Bill Stein... Steinberg, the artist. We were planning on integrating them more tightly into the plot after making the recurring element, but after I put them in the first dungeon, I probably forgot about them. Whoops. The new Cthulhu's Angels mode rectifies this, however. That answers that. So, the reason I would recommend RPG Maker over Godot is actually one extremely simple reason, Act. Because I don't actually know Godot. I haven't touched it yet. I only have third-hand experience from that. But I have actually used RPG Maker myself to good effect several times. I'm not likely to recommend something I've literally never used. Hey, Walker. So, I can tell you with total certainty, RPG Maker really is a good tutorial learning tool for the basics of game design. I have no idea about anything else. Other than a Wargroove. Wargroove is legit. If you want to make a game. Not if you actually want to enjoy a game. That dolphin, holy crap. Or seahorse, or whatever it is. Enjoying a game is what you do when you're playing Maneater. Uh, 
<laughs> Tell the freaking DLC. Don't buy the DLC from Anteater, it sucks. There's the bridge again, by the way. In case you missed it last time. Probably not giving any viscerality points to this game, not gonna lie. There is a shadow from the bridge. That's true, this game has better shading design than Star Wars Squadrons. Yeah, but I'm getting shrecked here about all this time. We'll make them insane. I, was, I got stronger for fighting insane enemies, though, not defeating them. I'm going to assume, based on context clues, that Von Falkenstein has actually played this game before. How about Squadrons? The story was garbage, and the gameplay was really good. We coined a new term from it. Squadron Syndrome. What's the opposite of Squadron Effect? Or Squadron Syndrome? Storybook game. We actually already have that term. I'm probably going to have to ding the music because it sounds like the music's restarting every repetition. I hate that. I think it was out of wilds. Honestly, if TIE Fighter had the mid mission checkpointing of squadrons, ooh. Hello, Sean. I will be honest. Uh, I'm not sure what the point is of playing Outer Wilds if you already know everything about it. Speaking of which, if you know nothing about Outer Wilds, I recommend playing it. Blind. It's like Stanley Parable. It really is best enjoyed blind. Okay, nothing over here. I figured. TIE Fighter. X-Wing was not a good game, to be very blunt about it. Ooh. Uh, oh, we're dead. I've game over it several times, Rax. See, Rax is here, but no Pax. Um. Oh, hey, Pax is here. Holy crap. I'm, I'm gonna die. 
Holy crap, that was actually pretty close. Uh, I don't know what any of these stats do. But anyways, yeah, I didn't like X-Wing at all. I actually thought X-Wing was legitimately a bad game. High Fighter's a good game. With issues. Losing heroically. I had issues with X-Wing Alliance. Um, I didn't get around to X-Wing Alliance until well after it was out. And I literally had troubles getting it playing, and it kept having bugs and crashes for me. So... X-Wing Alliance is probably a good game that I have never enjoyed, because I've never been able to. Right. Oh, once for battle, actually says right there. Bridge. We should start a bridge counter. Bridge. This is a long dungeon for a first dungeon, I gotta be honest. I'm a little surprised. Get the PUBG people are publishing it, which is just. Thing. Yes, that's gonna be our hydration check. Bridge! That was a fake bridge, doesn't count. I wonder if there's gonna be an indicator when you run out of encounters for a dungeon. Uh, oh god, how many bridges have we had so far? Oh, all the time act. They love to lie. Like, a lot. Like, I know that's that's the thing. Bridge. Um, everyone says salespeople lie, but no, nobody lies like tech salespeople. Oh, by the way, Subnautica doesn't actually Subnautica 2 doesn't actually have games as a service, by the way. Sorry. Over there. Let's put a cork on that nonsense really quickly there. And thank God for that. Last thing I need is to be looking forward to Subnautica 2 with dread instead of hope. As is, who knows? I mean, Below Zero was not good. Had some cool ideas. In the early playtest build of the game, there was no restore point before the Star Terror boss. After several complaints from players reaching the boss and dying because they were out of MP and, and perhaps forgetting to save as well, since they were used to only saving at restore points, we fixed this and added restore points before pretty much every boss of the game. RPG Maker Games... This is the nicest way I could put this, Czar. Are not good. They're Breath of Fire 1, in terms of what you can really do with them uh, on the gameplay axis. Now, you can do all kinds of stuff with the narrative axis, and that's why most RPG Maker games tend to focus heavily on the story side of things. But RPG Maker games are not there 
for gameplay. They're there for story. So you can use them in order to design and come up with cool stuff. And, uh, cool, you know, woo. But, uh, I, I don't have anything else to add to that. End statement. Yeah, it's also, it is very good to learn how to use in order to figure out basic, basic stuff. Sure, Monobrent. Uh, okay. Monobrent's insane! Alright, so. Oh my god, Cthulhu got to Monobrent. I'm so sorry, Monobrent. Uh, everyone, we have to kill Monobrent so we can gain a little more experience. Is that cool? Cthulhu and Umi looking over the mountain cliff with the sunrise behind him was one of the very first screenshots we released for the game. I want to show off the improvements we made to the engine, and besides, there's a few things more heroic than a squid man standing atop a cliff with a sword in hand. Oh, and to be clear, this is not an RPG Maker game. Sure looks like it, but it is not. As our adventurers cross the long bridge leading to Miskatonia, look at the ocean. A strange beast jumps out of the ocean, hurtling itself towards Cthulhu and Umi. Looks like a star terror! I haven't seen one of those since my days on Rigel, whatever that number is. Time to prove yourself, groupie! What about all those battles we fought to get to this point? Mere child's play! Now oh, show me what you got! Oh, yeah, I should also mention that RPG Maker... I have a little bit of ire for RPG Maker because they keep re-releasing it. And, and making it just a little bit worse than previous versions. So, most of what I'm telling you is from the versions from, like, 15 years ago at this point. Ow. Yeah, just little niggling things. I don't have a list in front of me. Sorry, 20 years ago, then. Because, yeah, I think the 2003 version is the one I used most extensively. Guess you're not as useless as I suspected! Yay, I'm not useless! Wait a second. I feel bad for the Star Terror, though. It reminded me of my pet starfish. You know, if instead of being a cute little friend, it was a huge, terrifying monstrosity. Don't kid yourself. If that Star Terror ever got a chance, he'd eat you and everyone you care about! Well, obviously, I'm not stupid. I still feel sorry for it, though. Oh yeah, sorry. Bridge. It was so big I didn't even notice it. An early version of the Star Terror boss had the difficulty all messed up. It was easy to cheese if you rep repeatedly used ailment attacks since that would keep it in a perpetual lock, but if you didn't, you were toast. Before release, we upped its ailment resistance to 10 while simultaneously lowering its power to make it more manageable. And that is the power of playtesting right there. 
I will always give praise to properly designed difficulty curves, because it's harder to do than it sounds, as most aspects of game development are. Uh, just, uh, I don't know. Lore off topic. Sorry. Hmm. I do like the idea of choosing your stand-ups on level. It's not full customization, but it's a little bit of customization. I, I appreciate that. Oh, a hundred percent, Act. Guaranteed. The only matter is when. The only question is when, excuse me. I should also mention I intend no insult to people who make RPG America games like, apparently, uh, Monobrant, which I was not aware of. I just... I'm trying to think of how to explain this sentence. I've actually played quite a few RPG Maker games, although admittedly, not for a long time. And there's a reason for that. It's because all the ones I played sucked. Um... <laughs> The ones I played that were actually worth a damn, I actually did on camera. And those were ones where the gameplay didn't exist. Like, I can actually point to several RPG Maker games that have what I would call a zero gameplay score. No positives, no negatives, just nothing. Like, it was, it was an, it, it had less gameplay than, um, uh, that walking simulator I can't think of the name of. Um, no, Von Valkenstein, I do not. So I am, I am, as usual, sure that there are good RPG Maker games, just as there's probably some good cops somewhere in the United States. I've just never seen any. No, no, hang on. It's actually, it's actually a current review. I'll look up the name of it. Hang on. I mean, valid, not to sex soul. Oh God, what was the name of that stupid game? Was it Gone Home? There it is. It was Gone Home. Yeah, so... <laughs> Gone Home had gameplay, as weird as that actually sounds. But, no, I, I have played several RPG Maker games which would legitimately get no gameplay points, plus or negative. I will admit the brickwork... Out of the map. The brickwork does actually look... Um, Mystic Quest style is what I would call this, which does put it above Secret of the Stars. Look at that, what you will. To the Moon, there's a good example. What the hell is Amori? You keep asking about Amori. What is Amori? Amori. What is Amori? It looks like an RPG Maker game. Oh, it's a horror game. Cool. Looks extremely stylized. Oh yeah, by the way, I would recommend RPG Maker over Unity. Moving on. All the various town names are based on various locations associated with H.P. Lovecraft and his work. The towns were named fairly late in development, so to this day I still prefer refer to them by names like Volcano Town and Zombie City. Also, we were originally going to name one of the towns Arkham. However, due to that name game's use in other works... We decided we'd play better off play it safe and not include it. Thanks, Batman. Welcome to Miskatonia.
Actually, no, this is even before that. Although, I will admit, the recent stuff about Unity has made Unity even worse. Like, I never recommended Unity. And then the recent stuff happened. So now I absolutely don't recommend Unity. Go poke at Godot. Or frickin' Unreal. Or RPG Maker. Or anything else. The town's music didn't change much from the original version to what's actually in the game, but it did change in one important way. The original version had a 10 second intro before the main body of music. By moving this intro to the end of the song, the overall feel of the music changed from a ballroom dance theme to a small rural town theme we were going for. Why what, Dex? The Shane reference was my wife's. Hey, and Shane, come back. What's wrong? I was exploring this cave to the northwest of my dog, Shane, when we were suddenly attacked by monsters. I ran as fast as I could and escape, but Shane's still trapped there. Let's go find this dog. I guess rescuing someone is the sort of thing a hero would do. Even if it's only a dog. Quest gained. Find Shane. Who is Shane? What is this a reference to? Unity is garbage. I spit on Unity. I spit venom on Unity. I spit barbs coated in venom on Unity. I keep going. That actually sounds familiar now that you say that, Pax. Name one example. Okay. Memory leak. You wish to be a hero? Go to the Shrine of Heroes to the east. If you can pass the test within and reach the highest floor, your wish may be granted. Yeah, no, there... So, let's be very clear. Let's be honest. Okay, let's stop joking for one second. I'm kind of in a jokey mood because I'm playing this. But no, let's stop being funny. For one second. Let us get all boring voice. Nope, I'm being funny again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There have been good games in Unity, but Unity is trash. Unity has been yeah, a problem they have not solved in over a decade. Unity is not a good engine. It is an engine that people have to rip and shred in order to do what they want it to do. Now, very talented people have managed exactly that. There are very good games on Unity. But I have heard so many horror stories for across so many years from so many developers making so many different games of what it was like working on Unity. The reason people used Unity is it was the default answer. It was the game engine. It's the same reason you go to Walmart. That doesn't mean I'm going to ever under any circumstances recommend you go to Walmart as long as you have another option available. Any questions? There's a crazy old man near the edge of the town who just repeats gibberish over and over. Here's a member of an evil cult that worships, worships an ancient false god. Good to hear I still have followers. Have you ever heard this horrible monster that's coming to kill us? It's called Kathila or something? Kilthy? Ah, it's supposed to be huge as a mountain with hideous green skin. There's a million gold bounty for whoever manages to kill the whole world creature. Only a million? Surely I'm worth a gazillion gold. In an early version of the game's design, we intended to do a full-fledged dating sim sequence between Cthulhu and Umi. Sadly, this got cut due to time restraints. Thank God. Nothing, Pillars of Snow. Nothing. Nothing at all. We need to kill Pillars of Snow. They've been tainted by Walmart. I love you. I love you. I love you more. No, I love you more. Ah, true love. Isn't it wonderful? How old are these kids? Five? Students at Miskatonia University are quite cute this year, don't you agree? Are you... are you looking in the door? Welcome to Miskatonia University. Our doors are open to all... <laughs> I've played it before. I got this. Adventuring lesson number one. Know your stats. Higher your strength. More your physical damage. Magic is spells. Agility is turn order. Vitality is defense. And... That's it. Okay, cool. I mean, she... You missed it earlier, Evo, and that's all I'm going to say about that. He does have the tentacle beard going on. What do I think of the visual design? You tell me, Evo. You have made this game. Congrats. What do you think of the visual design?
It is very Mystic Quest, which is better than Secret of the Stars. For the opening movie that plays before the title screen, I had the idea of focusing on a Miskatonic university professor who had been driven insane by dreams of Cthulhu saving the world and not destroying it like the literature said he should. The cutscene would take place in an insane asylum, but Bill rightly put it out our world has no asylum, asylum map, and it was too late to put one in. In the end, we scrapped the idea. These are very good questions, Type 3B Skeleton. Uh, I think we could summarize the significance and relevance of Lovecraft to this story by the following. Woof. Also, that dog's name was Cthulhu. Beware the dreaded belt man. Drawing power from his outfit made almost entirely of belts, so he's a Nomura, Nomura character. He can boost his stats to astronomically high levels. Defeat him quickly if you run into him. Beltman is, of course, a reference to Tetsuya Nomura's love of sticking belts in his character designs. Speaking of which, I am going to give this game a positive for the fact that dev commentary is a thing. I'm going to try that again. There we go. Uh, there we go. Oh god, now I'm in run mode. How do I enter run mode? I do not own a PlayStation 5, Type 3B. Ever since the bridge broke... Also, I wouldn't have had time even if I did. We haven't heard anything from the people in Dunwich. Yeah, I don't mean to sound complainy, but what I did was I finished all of the paperwork and post-stream stuff from the Ruiner run, and then I was in a lot of pain and nausea from the Ruiner run, which gave me a headache and made me sick to my stomach. So I ate something to settle my stomach, and then I laid down for about an hour. And then I started streaming this. Get out of my room, you horrible monster. I've still got it! Yeah, by the way, Ruiner, all the visual warnings. Oh, I need to need to add that to the VOD title. I meant to do that. I thought about that as I was napping. I like woke up for a few seconds like, oh shoot, I forgot to add the nap title. And add it back. Uh, we'll put epilepsy warning. There we go. I demand all the spoilers in the spoilers channel, of course. So apparently Mark of the Ninja has a developer commentary? God damn it, why did nobody tell me this? Hang on, I have to go stab Noctis X Soul really quick. Ah, there we go. Okay. I'm gonna have to go look that up too. I'll make a note here. Yeah, I, you probably missed me literally taking a Dramamine early on uh, at Type 3B. That's the music thing we already read out loud. I'm not sleeping anymore. Okay, well, we have a quest to go save a Dirg. If you told me, Evo, picture generic JRPG, this is what would come to mind. And that's my thoughts on the on the graphics. There's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. But uh, the odds of me giving a brickwork positive are somewhat low. Maybe one. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Really. If anything, what I am most reminded of is Super Mario Bros. 3 on the NES. See that from Bob's time. I'm 
always loath to crap on someone's work, so... Forgive me. But it's garbage! Yeah, that's what I thought. The music reset problem is there. Let's find this dog. Let's go save Shane. Jesus Christ, I give up. I'm going to go one up on that. Uh, I have played It Takes Two. I have also played uh, the much, much better one, which I can't think of the name of right now. Congrats, Lord Aramont. No, that's. I'm not even making fun. That's that's a thing in that game. So congrats. No, not Lovers in Space Time, although that's actually a really good co-op game I highly recommend. Um, oh, sorry, I was getting it confused. Sorry, sorry. It Takes Two is the second one, which is much better. A Way Out is the first one, which is the prototype of It Takes Two. A Way Out is not actually all that good. It Takes Two is really good. I mean, they are awful parents act. Pax and I were making fun of that constantly the whole time. Like, these people are just terrible, terrible parents. And I get that's kind of the point, but at the same time, they never really acknowledge it in-universe. Yeah, these are giving me, um... One... Fortieth? Of a level, each kill. So these are not worth my time. Probably act, although probably only one. The real problem is that they just don't really call it out in universe, which they really should. Uh, yes, it was, Hero. This was a game selected by Gary and Pax, and funded at their proviso. Let me actually talk to the innkeeper. Maybe we should go do that. Apparently free. Good to know. Hang on. I do have gold, but I haven't seen a vendor yet. Probably because I'm an idiot. Surely this is a vendor. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. See that blacksmith? Unlike most of the character sprites in this game, the, the blacksmith sprite only consists of one image. No point in making more if he's only going to be facing town all the time. Yeah, it's a common thing. And a common problem if you're sprite ripping. Are you thirsty? Yes, I am. Thanks for asking. Don't get that. Welcome to my shop, oh horrifying one. See around, Dex. Now. That takes up basically all of my gold, so we're absolutely going to do it. Why does that cost 500,000 gold? Don't answer that question.
Well, that's all I can afford. It's not enough 500 grand lying around. If I did that, I'd run for president. Was only 18 experience. I need 120 to level right now. For a fight that nearly killed me. Okay, Cthulhu will save the world, don't you worry. since healing is free, let's go do that, I suppose. Thank God I found the auto run. I have no idea where, what button did that, of course, but yay. shift. You hold shift to run. Something I hit somewhere toggled run. I have no idea what I hit. The cave tile set is a remake of the ones we used for the caves in Breath of Death 7. When did I stream that? Hang on, hang on. Hey, that's gonna bug me now. Like, they mentioned, someone earlier mentioned it was during the explorations phase of streams when we were still trying to figure out what we're going to do with streaming. There it is. Breath of Death 7 and Legacy of Dorne, Herald of Oblivion. We apparently played both of those in one session. No memory of that. All right. Um. Yeah, but I don't have access to the options right now. Oh, you know what I could do? Hang on. Let's save. Let's quit the game. Let's go to options. Uh, it's apparently caps lock. Why did that become the standard of all things? Why did that become the standard? Someone explain that to me. Yeah, but it's caps lock. Like, did nobody at any point in time think about how dumb of an idea that was? Alright, I'm done, I'm done. Listen, all I'm saying is everyone ever is extremely stupid, except for me, because I'm a moron. Any questions?
Interestingly, I noticed they refill our HP and mana after every fight. So this is the FF13 approach to difficulty design. That probably explain why every single fight feels like it can kill me. Because it can. Because they know... So this is... Uh, <laughs> I don't... Uh, I don't mean this as an insult. I really don't. But I'm probably going to give FF13 a negative for this when we get there. Because what they're, the reason they do this is so that they know exactly what your relative power level will be at the beginning of every fight, because you start with, with fully refilled health. Um, not mana, sorry. Your mana gets refilled based on how long the fight goes. So they know you've got full health at the beginning of the fight, so they can design the difficulty of each fight around you having full health. I bring that up because uh, most dungeon designs and most RPGs have to design around where they think the player's going to be at in terms of relative resources, in terms of items and health, and mana, and potions, and whatever else, right? I realize I, I just listened to the same thing twice. It's because I couldn't think of anything else right off the top of my head. And of course, games that do that particular balancing thing badly tend to kind of suck. Looking at you, Breath of Fire 2. And we're dead. I give up. I mean, the problem with FF13 is it doesn't make one mistake. It makes like 15 mistakes, and all of them kind of jumble into each other simultaneously to make the whole game just worse than it really should be. Conjoined systems. I talk about that all the time. Like, if you have bad encounter design, that's whatever. But then if you have bad encounter design and bad enemy design, well, that sucks. And then if you have bad encounter design, bad enemy design, bad progression design, you get the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop there, but you get it. Yeah, someone mentioned that earlier, Pancakes. I like how she can turn someone insane, but only once. Cthulhu could just turn someone insane forever. Because he's Cthulhu. That's a good question, Pillars of Snow. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I mean, the problem is... FF13 would probably be improved by a host of different changes to its gameplay style. But would it be substantially improved? Much trickier question. At one point, we were planning on giving each bonus dungeon its own story, but when development was running late, we ended up scrapping this idea into the later bonus dungeon alternative optional treasure hunts. It's supposed to be Shane. Come on, boy, let's get you home. Halt! This dog has despoiled this sacred burial ground with its digging for bones. It must atone by dying! We're gonna save a dog from a ninja spirit. And that's only the second weirdest thing we've done today. No, that's, that's absolutely valid, Pillars of Snow, and I agree with you, that is one of the many things that game does wrong. Ideally, of course, it would be nice if they actually, you know, gave them the gear and kit and abilities necessary to support their roles, but... We'll do that for bosses. We haven't had ailments yet. But I bet you ailments are going to be an issue. So let's presume that ailments will be an issue. 
Let's just let's just presume that and get the anti ailment spell. You know, that's one of the reasons I don't like crapping on RPG Maker games. Even though I just did it earlier. Can anyone guess the reason why? It's because they're better than anything I'll ever make. Well, that's a magic sword, which I do not want. So we're just going to sell that. Let's try out this castle over here, shall we? What if the encounter cap exists on the overworld? I would assume not. The Shrine of Heroes. All the great heroes have made a hump program here. Fist Big Strong Punch, Magellan, Dash the Daring, Alma the Younger, Hero, Rescue Man Boy. And now, Castillo! I shall scale the heights of the Shrine Hero, proving to all that I am a true hero. Can you spot all the references in the Shrine? Nope. I cannot. Except for Hero. That's Dragon Quest. Sore heart. Suffers from frequent heartburn. The Gargoyle's been trying to get a TV deal for years. Yeah, ain't that the truth. And this is an old game, by the way. <laughs> Just making that... Twisting that knife a little bit worse there. Did you wa ever watch the unofficial continuation, Rax? If yes, what did you think of it? I'll be honest, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, it's called Gargoyles, and it is something you can find. But I don't know, like, what terminology fans use to refer to it, so that you can find it properly. I only became aware of it a few months ago, when my niece got really into Gargoyles, and then ended up watching, you know, the unofficial continuation. I don't know, Rax, she does watch anime. Is it the Goliath Chronicles? I believe you. But either way, it's exactly what you'd expect from that kind of a continuation. Really? Already? My goodness. 
I feel like I'm being attacked by someone who's adorable and terrifying. Hopefully that's not a thing. I don't, I don't think I could take it if that were true. Okay, I, as, a, as you may or may not have been able to figure out, I've just been informed that it is cutoff time for the day. So tomorrow, at the soft starting time of 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, we will save the world as Cthulhu. Okay.